Hello and welcome to another tutorial. This is going to be the last Pong tutorial in our series. After that, the Pong game will be finished. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, remember you need to be on the branch 15 Finnish Vulcan. The link will be in the description. If you remember the last time, we were able to have our UI system basically working. We can click two buttons. We can play and quit. Play opens the normal play window that we had before. And the quit button basically quits the application. In order to finish the game, we need to complete a full game loop. Currently, our game loop looks like this. When we are in the main menu, we draw two two buttons the first button to play the game and the second button to quit the application and when we play the game we switch to running level which will update our level in update level we currently have no way to switch back to the main menu and i thought it would be a nice idea if we started there putting in like a small section over here which is called input and in this input section we can check if we press the key this frame which takes in the input and we want to check if we press the key escape the key we don't have yet and then we would switch back to the game state main menu now we need to implement the escape key and for that we need to go back to our input system we're going to add the key escape here and the key id okay so once we edit that we need to switch to the win32 platform c++ file where we check for the different key codes we add in the key id case a quick check on the internet gives us the vk escape enum so we gotta check the vk underscore escape if we have that we set the key id to key escape and of course don't forget to break we can now go back to the main menu by pressing escape okay next we switch back to the game cpp file let's get rid of the text here pong from scratch first i want to make sure that i can display the game time in seconds would be nice in order to do that i need to do a text and a number we already have a way to do a text let's get that back we could say well we have time colon and let's change the position of the time let's say 10 pixels from the left and 10 pixels from the top next i need to be able to do a number and now there's two ways to do what i'm about to do i want to do a text like this time colon and then let's say 30 and maybe seconds after that but maybe we don't even show the seconds we just say 30 or we say time 120 which basically implies that it's seconds and so there's two ways to do that the first way would be to do a sprint f we take in some sort of buffer and then a format string which would be time colon percentage d for decimal number and then a seconds after that and then we would have to supply the number which would be the game state game time and if we don't have that yet we will have to implement that we need to go to the game state structure and put in a float game time and so that would be the first approach right the sprint if or the second approach would be to actually implement what i would call a do number taking in a position let's say 60 pixels and then 10 pixels and then of course it would take in the number which would be the game date game time and i would just turn that into an integer value so we only have seconds and since we do not have this do number function i think it would be cool to implement that just to show both options so let's switch to the ui c++ file where we have the do text function we also do a void do number function taking in the ui state pointer ui a vector to position and a int number and i think i will just copy the code from do text into do number and the only difference would be to change the label number using the number and i don't think we have a number yet and also initialize the label to zero whenever we get one i forgot that up here too in the do text do that here too l is initialized to zero and then in a label which i guess is implemented in ui.h i supply an int number like this now the difference between those is one has a number and the other one has a text or there can be both in order to decide what to draw we need to go into the vk renderer which is under renderer vk renderer down into the function where we draw everything which is in the vk render function we have a section here ui rendering and this section goes through all ui elements and after that it goes through all labels and then it renders text supplying a label position and a label text and if we inspect the text function real quick it just takes in a pointer to a text goes through every character and then basically adds that transform to an array of transforms which will be drawn later and so that means what we can do here is we can check if l number is unequal to zero and i know we will not be able to display a zero that way there's also a different way to do this if we go back to the ui.cpp file by default a label if we initialize that the int number is going to be an int 32 max or we could also put that into defines so in defines.h we have 
have an invalid index. We could also have an invalid number, which is not a U int max, but an integer max, which if we look at this real quick, is just the highest possible integer value, right? So we could say, okay, we have an invalid number, which would be invalid number over here in a label. And so whenever we supply a default label whose number is not an invalid number, we want to generate a small buffer on the stack. I don't know, let's say 16 values. And then we do the sprint F over here into the buffer using the percentage D value and then the L number. And after that, of course, we render text. And then we guard this with another if check if the label has a text. Now that it, we can have numbers and texts, we also need to check for text. We will only then draw a text. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure I made a mistake. Do number identifier not found, meaning in game CPP, which includes the UI.h file, I do not have a function defined that says do number. So we only have a void to text here, which I need to complete with do number. We just change this to do number. And then over here, instead of chart text, we have an int number. I have some more mistakes. Label is not a pointer here. It is just a stack value. So no pointer. We have to access them through points. Okay, that's one more issue. We have to supply the buffer, not the label text. And so now it gives me a time zero. And so the zero right here, it's, it's not aligned properly and so this is why i don't really like this approach but we can use it we now have the ability to simply draw numbers at any position in our engine and let's say uh, i think 70 might be good cringe it's still cringe okay uh, let's use 90 lol and whenever we update the level using the delta time we could say game state game time plus equals delta time now we have a way to track our time let's get rid of some of these comments here i want to have a section that says time and i want everything in this section to relate to time and then in the next section over here that i want to create which is the score we need to keep track of something whenever the ball touches the right hand side we get a point so i want to keep track of some sort of score and i think we can do the same thing with the time as with the game time over here we go into the game state and add in a int score and so we essentially just have to copy this and do the same thing we say score and instead of using the game time we use the score and we don't need to cast that to an int of course we now need to change the position here i think i want to start this off at 200 and then we can basically just use 275 actually 85 or 95 might be better let's try that okay well now we have a score we might even want to put the score on the top right but i'll leave it here also i noticed that this guy is moving down faster than he's moving up so there's still a bug in here and i think i fixed that for like five times now this is the last time we're going to fix this okay so in order to fix the problem with the pedal moving faster than the ball is i made a small diagram to understand what was happening what we did here we calculated a heading uh, y heading for the pedal and then we created a distance to the ball and this distance to the ball was calculated using the ball's origin and then the pedal origin and so i made a small example here 340 for the pedal if the pedal is above the ball or 360 for the pedal if the pedal is below the ball remember the y coordinate grows as we go further down that's a little bit different than most engines and so what we would get is a value of 10 and minus 10 and we were comparing a position value to a relative value which is a distance which doesn't make any sense we need to pretend we are moving down, for example, to 355. Then we need to look at the ball's origin, 350, and check if where we would move is now greater than where the ball is currently. If that is the case, then we want to set our position to the ball's position to make sure that we do not get the stuttering effect moving up and down because we never quite reach the ball. Basically, we are cutting up speed by, I think, yeah, 30% here just so that we get to the exact position of the ball. And the same is here. And so that is wrong, not the distance of the ball. This is wrong. We need to check against the actual position of the ball over here. And so instead of checking if the heading is less when we are below the ball and we need to move up we need to check if our heading is greater than the ball's origin which would be ball origin dot y and over here actually wait the heading here needs to be we need to check if we are below the ball actually so if the heading is less than the ball's origin and then when the ball is down basically we are above the ball then the ball is down we need to check if our heading is greater than the ball origin dot y that looks a lot better now the pedal is not able to keep up with the ball at some point now that is fixed finally the next thing i want to do has to do with the ball itself whenever the ball touches the left plane i wanted to 
close the game basically or go in some sort of game over state and if the ball touches the right side over here i wanted to increase our score by i don't know let's say 100 points and then the 100 points will be incremented based on how much game time has passed i think the speed would be a nice value the speed is changing based on time and so we can use that as a multiplier for our points that we award this must be the right side and then this must be the left side okay so whenever we touch the left side we want to change into a game state game state would be game state score screen we do not have that yet and over here we want to increase the game state score plus equals i think we could just ink award speed if that is available here it is available we just do not have a game state score screen for that we need to go up into our game state id and add in a game state score screen okay now we have that and then down below in our update level we add in another case game state score screen in the score screen i think to make it very simple we just draw the logo and i think we can add in a button just yoink that yoink and also make sure the global layer is decreased ui global layer minus minus so we yoink the play button and instead of play we say restart and then over here we could say i would not like to restart but i would actually like to go to the main menu and so whenever we go to the main menu we click that button we obviously go into the game state main menu like this just noticed restart is written wrong restart change that real quick uh, whenever we restart we also need to reset some things right we need to reset the game state game time to zero and we need to reset the game state score to zero okay after taking a look at how i've structured this the ball has a velocity that i set to 500 and 250 and then we have a speed up in the ball down here let's see of 25 and i would like to put the speed up and the initial velocity i want to extract those to constants so over here at the very top of game cpp i want to do a float const expression speed up and set that to 25 and i know that 25 is a little bit much so instead of 25 we use 15 and then we have a float const expression x velocity initial x velocity 500 now with these two constants we can go back into init game and then we set the initial velocity of the ball of the init x velocity like this and then we use for the y velocity we use the initial x velocity divided by two and now at update level instead of having this local variable speed i want to actually put that into the game state call that load pedal speed and then back in update level instead of using speed as a constant we use the game state pedal speed so we don't have to change much and of course we change the game state pedal speed by the speed up times the delta time now the pedal speeds will scale together with the ball speed and will make it easier to catch the ball and then of course before we start the game in the initialization method initialize the game state pedal speed to initial x velocity over here how does that feel like it might be too fast now i want to make the computer less strong meaning you know his speed is gonna be a bit less okay the right pedal has to if we have the right pedal uh, of course we use speed times 0.9f let's say we use 90 percent speed everywhere over here too 0.9f uh, the rest should be fine right yeah okay and so the ball now thinking about that let's just make the ball much slower so i think i would like to change the initial x velocity down to 400 and then we do a float const expression initial x velocity for pedals which would be 500 actually instead of x velocity we use the y velocity and then obviously we supply that in the initialize game function which is called init y velocity pedals okay once we have that the last thing we need to do is go into the score screen at the very bottom here where we go back into the running level and we could just call init game using the game state and input but before we do that we need to set the game state entity count to zero let's see if that works play restart and it seems like we now have a way to reset the game after we lost or we go back to the main menu and quit or play oh if we go back to the main menu we do not restart the game just notice that so we also need to restart the game here so i think the easiest one would be to yoink this 
and put this in here. Do this twice. Now, obviously, that could be done better, but I'm feeling a little lazy, so I'll keep it like this. Now, obviously, that's not the only thing I want to display in this screen. I want to also display the score and the time, or at least the score. So I would like to yoink that, and we get that from update level by taking the score. Go back down into the score screen case. Now, obviously, the position is off. Okay, after trying out a bit, I found out that 450 and 350 is a good position, and then 545 for the number and 350 for the number those are two good positions for the score now if we start the game and we lose we get a score screen here in the middle telling us to restart or go back to the main menu the last thing is i want to check if my score actually works if it shows me the score correctly boom 1100 and we lost we got a score of 1100 now looking at it i might even want to position the score a little bit more to the left go back to the score screen and change this back to 400 and 495 and this concludes the tutorial for pong i know that this has been a very long tutorial and the most dry period of the tutorial has been the part where we have been working on Vulcan. And I also know that many of the things that I showed are a little bit weird. Ever since I started this tutorial series, I have learned a lot about making engines. And so there's a possibility to improve this a lot. We have a fast compiling engine or let's say a framework not really an engine that we can use to build 2d games in because i actually started off with something like this and currently i have a game in which i'm able to do most things other engines are capable of as well like drawing uis and displaying tech and having options being able to draw bezier curves and having animated enemies having particle systems like you can see on the mouse here i even currently i'm working on a level editor that shows me uh, where i can basically move stuff around and and so you can do many things if you just keep on working on a project. It doesn't have to be this engine. It doesn't have to be uh, the same type of game. It doesn't have to be a commercial engine. It can be your own ideas. But basically, this is what I wanted to show. Yeah, I wanted to show that you can start with basically nothing and get to a point where you can do many different things. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I will now do the git stuff and I will see you next time with a little bit of a different tutorial. If you like what I do, consider tuning into my Twitch. I stream at 10 a.m. Central Eastern Time, which is 1 a.m. Pacific Daytime. If you want to directly support me, you can do so via Patreon. This will give me more time to work on my game Cake Study, and you will get reading access to the GitHub repository. Patreons will also be called out at the end of every video. Subscribing and leaving a like also helps a lot. Thank you very much for your support. So yeah, thank you very much Jonas, Michael Phillips, Felix F, Meo Meo the Writer, and Shruptor for your support. Additionally, Pixel art I publish on itch.io will also be available for Patreons. Okay, so let's see. We want to do a git checkout minus B. 16 proper 2D render interface. Then git add. Git commit minus M. Finished the Pong game itself. Git push minus U origin. 16 proper 2D render interface. So yeah, thank you all for watching and see you next time.